I've been feeling a bit nostalgic lately, so today I'm taking a look at Ubuntu 6.06, .06, which was the first LTS release of Ubuntu, and it came out on June 1st of 2006 and reached its end of life in, I think, June 2009, though I might be wrong. Though I do know that on the desktop version it was in 2009, because this was back when LTS releases of Ubuntu only had three years of support on the desktop version instead of five years, which we have now. The whole point of this video is to see how far Ubuntu has come since the first LTS release, and to see if it's still usable today, if so, to what extent. But anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. In case you're unfamiliar, Ubuntu has an archive site where you can download old versions of Ubuntu. You can get to it by going to old-releases.ubuntu.com slash releases. And then it'll give you a list of all the old Ubuntu releases. In our case, the one that we want is 6.06. .06, and then we want the desktop CD. And then in our case, since we have a 64-bit PC, we want the download for the 64-bit PC. Now I've already downloaded this file. I've got it right here my VMware folder. So now I'm gonna go pop into VMware and then I already have a Ubuntu 6.06 .06 VM setup with the ISO connected so to speak but I haven't actually installed Ubuntu 6.06 .06, so we're gonna do that together. But anyway I'm gonna go power this on and then it'll go automatically boot into the Ubuntu 6.06 .06 CD. We're gonna start or install Ubuntu and then it'll go and boot up Ubuntu 6.06. .06. Okay it seems to be doing nothing. Oh I forgot about this. So you can install Ubuntu 6.06 in VMware. However, since Ubuntu 6.06 .06 doesn't support the SATA protocol, you need to go to your virtual CD drive in your Ubuntu 6.06 .06 VM settings, then click on advanced, and then change the virtual CD drive to IDE. And then we're going to go save this. And now we should be able to boot up Ubuntu 6.06. .06. But anyway, we're going to hit start or install Ubuntu one more time, and then it'll go boot us into Ubuntu 6.06. .06. And by the way, this is actually the first Ubuntu release to have have a custom splash screen at startup that displayed the Ubuntu logo. They had a nice slogan sound on this, by the way. I don't know if you heard. But anyway, now we're gonna go install Ubuntu 6 out of 6. And we're gonna choose English as our language, select our time zone, New York works fine for me. And then for our keyboard layout, we're gonna pick American English. Name, I'm gonna put in Drew Howden Tech. And then for our username, I just like to put Drew. And then let's go pick a password. And then for the name of this computer, I'm gonna call it Ubuntu 606, then click forward. And then we can go erase this disk since I don't have any other operating systems on this VM. And I'm gonna be deleting Ubuntu 6 out of 6 after this video is done. But if you wanted to dual boot, you would use manual partitioning. But anyway, all this looks good. So let's go ahead and click install. And you may notice that this is back when Ubuntu had a swap partition. These days it just has a swap file at the root partition or your main partition, if you know what I mean. But anyway, let's go ahead and click install. And then it'll go install Ubuntu 6.06. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. And then because this is an old release, it'll give us this error that it can't access the security updates. There is a way to fix this after installation, which I'll go after installation. But for now, we're just going to click OK and then continue with the installation process. All right, now that our installation is complete, we're going to click Restart Now. And then it'll go boot us into our new Ubuntu 6.06 .06 installation. And we've got to press Enter to continue. It is interesting to look at the old Ubuntu bootloader, like just seeing how much that has changed. All right, and then this is the login screen. I don't know if you heard the sound that Ubuntu used to make when you got to the login screen. But anyway, we can go explore our options here. We get options to restart, shut down, suspend, hibernate, what you would expect. We can go select our desktop environment. We'll just leave it at last session and even select our language. Yeah, let's just leave it at last language. I do wonder what remote login via XDMCP is. I'll have to play with that later. But anyway, let's go log in by typing in my user name and then the password which I made when I was installing this. Yeah. By the way, this is Ubuntu's old login sound. 
and first impression after logging in, I noticed that the desktop is very clean. That actually reminded me of one thing that I don't like about the recent Ubuntu releases. Like, they've just started putting a couple icons on your desktop, one for the home folder and one for trash. Okay, I can understand the trash icon, but I think the home folder icon is kind of unnecessary. And besides, I'm one who doesn't really like icons on their desktop. I mainly just use it for decoration most of the time. It's really just a personal preference. But anyway, let's go to system preferences and see if we can see out this display by going to screen resolution. And it looks like this is as high as it'll go, so we're gonna have to continue to watch this with this aspect ratio. But anyway, we can go explore the old GNOME 2 desktop. We've got applications right here on this list view, kind of like Windows XP and Windows 7. We've got places here where you can open up our file manager, like so, and we even have a direct shortcut to our desktop folder. We can even get to the root of our drive quickly, so that's kind of nice. And we've even got a CD slash DVD creator. I don't actually have any disks to use with this, so we can just ignore that. And we've got our network servers and the connect to server option right here. Very nice. So you can connect this to your home media server. And let's go search for files, all from the places menu. And then if we go to system, we've got our system settings all conveniently right here, and even the administration applications and settings. But anyway, one notable thing is we've got Synaptic Package Manager. You gotta enter a password, which is basically an advanced tool for installing packages. If you're one of those advanced users who likes this kind of layout, you can do that. But there's also the Add Remove tool, which is more intuitive. In fact, actually the whole goal of the Ubuntu Software Center, which debuted in October of 2009 with Ubuntu 9.10, was to take this Add Remove tool and make it even easier to use. It can't connect to the repo. I'll show you to fix that in a minute. It. But I mean, you basically just found an application, checked it off, then clicked OK. And it was actually kind of confusing, but still at least arguably easier than Synaptic Package Manager. Now I also want to go over the Update Manager quickly. And I know Ubuntu 14.04 was the first LTS release to call this Software Updater and actually use a more simplified, streamlined interface for this, where now you just open it up, checks for updates, and then if there are any, you just click Install Updates. and then and it goes and installs them. With this, you have to actually manually click check. Can't find any updates because it can't connect to the repo, but I'll go over how to fix that. One mistake I made in my Ubuntu 8.04 installation first impressions video, which I encourage you to go check that out, is that I basically said that there was no way to fix that, and that was false. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that by going to accessories, terminal, and then I'm gonna go type sudo nano slash etsy slash apt slash sources dot list enter my password. And then what we gotta do is find every line beginning with deb, then we gotta remove its pound symbol, or I know a lot of you may call it a hash symbol, and then replace us.archive.ubuntu.com with old-releases.ubuntu.com, and then repeat this for every line. I'll meet you once I'm done. And then we've also got to do the same thing with security.ubuntu.com. Just replace that with old-releases.ubuntu.com, like so. And then we just double check that we've got everything, then hit Control X, and then Y, then Enter. And then we can close out of our terminal. And then to prove this worked, we're gonna go back into our Update Manager and click Check. And then this time it'll actually connect to the Update repo, and then actually find updates, which will be shown here in a minute, and there we go. So then we can go click install updates to get this as up to date as possible. This will only get us to like 2009 when this hit its end of life, but it's still nice to get it fully up to date. And then this will go ahead and download the updates and then install them, and I'll speed this up. All right, now that this update is complete, we're gonna click close, and then it's gonna ask us to restart our system, but before I do, I just wanna mention one thing I love about this wallpaper, is that you could literally pop it onto any operating system, modern or ancient, and it'll blend right in. Let me show you what I mean. I use this wallpaper on my Linux system, in case you haven't noticed, just out of personal preference, and at least in my opinion, it blends in perfectly with the system. But anyway, let's go ahead and restart our Ubuntu 6. Six system. We start now. 
And you may have also heard the logout sound. That's also nice. All right, now that we're back at the login screen, I wanna see what this remote login via XDMCP is. Okay, it's basically a way to have an enterprise login on a server, I guess, or log into a remote system. I'm not 100% sure what that's for. If you used this back in the day, please comment what this is for. But anyway, I'm gonna click cancel since I don't have any remote hosts to use. And then it'll go boot us back into our login screen, and let's go log in. And I am curious what version of GNOME we have. This is the old GNOME 2 desktop. If you like this look and feel, there is the Mate desktop environment, which is basically a fork of the old GNOME 2 desktop. So we got version 2.14.3. But anyway, let's look at what's installed on the system. We've got the Alicart menu editor. You can, of course, still get this from the Ubuntu Software Center, but even modern Ubuntu versions don't have any Thing like this pre-installed. And we can go edit our menu and control what items show on our menu and what doesn't by checking and unchecking these boxes. But anyway, I want to see what else is for applications. We got a calculator. That's kind of boring. Character map. Dictionary. Let's say we want to go look up the word ubiquitous and it shows. I'm not quite sure what the advantage to this is over just looking it up on a search engine like Google. Well, I guess if you don't have the internet, but even then most people today do. I actually do wonder if it has Ubuntu in here. Ah, what about Linux? Oh, it does. It's defined as an open source version of the Unix operating system. I actually did not know that Linux actually had its own definition in the dictionary as an official word or as a noun to be more precise. And it even kind of gives you a brief history of Linux. That's kind of cool. And we can go take a screen screenshot here. Let's save this like so and then open this up. There we go. But anyway, we don't really need this screenshot here so let's go delete that. Now let's get to our trash bin right here like so and we can go empty the trash and of course we got a terminal which we already used. Text editor, pretty simple as far as text editors go. And you've got some pre-installed games like Solitaire and Minesweeper, you know, the usual suspects. And also some games that you've probably never heard of, like Robots. You can look that up in the Ubuntu Software Center or the Software Center for whatever distribution you use on your own time. And GIMP actually came pre-installed with this distribution up until I believe 10.04, correct me if I'm wrong though. Let's actually see how much this has changed since 6.06. .06. Can create a new project. Come on, do 1080p. There we go. Yeah, actually, not much. This is, I believe, GIMP 2.2.11, except we got our tools in different windows. I actually do wonder if there was a way that you could put this onto one window. I'm not going to waste time going through the entire application to look for a way to do that, so I'm not going to bother. Yes, let's close all tabs. And we've got an image viewer and an image scanner. Yeah, no device is available because I did not link a printer to this. I wonder what Ikija is. Oh, so it's basically like a VoIP application. And you've also got Firefox and Evolution Mail linked up here. If you wanted to add more applications, you just right click and then click add to panel, and then you'd add an application launcher, and then go find GIMP like so, and click add. Then you can move it to wherever you want on the panel. And then if you want to remove it, you just right click on it, then click remove from panel. And then this is actually so customizable that you could even delete panels, similar to what you could do on KDE. And hmm, I wonder how to create a new one. Basically what you do is you just right click on this and then click new panel like so, and then we can go delete that panel. You notice that EKJ is still open, so let's right click on that, then click quit. There we go. We don't need that open and taking up resources. I want to see what the game is. Let me just go add an account. Okay, let's just do like Drew out in tech. Create a password. I'm not gonna actually spend time creating something since I don't know how secure that is. Anyway, let's click save and then see if we can click sign on. Could not connect to host. Okay, let's modify that. Okay, yeah, so basically this was for dial-up back when that still existed. Let's actually get out of this. I don't like it when applications just stay open in the background and take up resources. I don't know why applications think it's okay to do that. I get it for some applications, not others. Like VLC Media Player, like there's definitely no reason why that needs to be open in the background. What I really don't like is this bug for the version that ships at the Ubuntu 20.04, is that if you don't close it fully, it just stays open in the background, and the only way to close it is by going into your system monitor and killing off the process. Hopefully that gets fixed by the time Ubuntu 22.04 LTS rolls around. But anyway, let's get back to 6.0. Six, going into the terminal server client. This is basically 
like their version of a team viewer. But anyway, let's actually take a look at the evolution setup here. Or not, because I don't actually want to put in my account. Now let's actually go into Firefox. And I actually love this, kind of like an introduction to the OS. Similar thing with about Ubuntu, back when it was nicknamed Linux for Human Beings. That was its slogan back then. You don't need to read all this. You can if you want to, by just pausing this video. But anyway, let's see if we can go look up my channel. Okay, yeah, you can still look stuff up on this, even if it is kind of broken. Let me get a click, okay, okay, okay. Man, it would be pretty annoying browsing the web on this, when like none of the security certificates out there it'll approve of. And it basically, ironically warns you about connecting to a secure page. Anyway, what version of Firefox is this? 1.5.0.12 EOL, I'm not sure what the EOL stands for. At this point, it should stand for end of life. Anyway, I've got the support documentation. Let's see if we can still get to the online documentation. No. Let's see if we can go to Ubuntu.com. Nope, none of this works. Let's see, the system documentation, except for that, that'll still work. About Ubuntu. Yeah, pretty much what we saw there, so that's kind of pointless. But anyway, the good news is we do have an open office word processor, so we can type up documents on this guy, like so. Let's say, this is a test file, then save that by hitting Control S, then I'm going to just call it test. You can save it on the desktop, even though I don't generally like to save it to the desktop. Also, at the same time, don't feel like creating a documents folder right now. And let's click save. And then there we go. We can open this up with OpenOffice 2.0. Remember, this is still about five years before LibreOffice debuted. So before then, we had OpenOffice. But anyway, let's actually go into the file manager and create a documents folder. I think if I was using this back in the day, when they introduced the documents and pictures folders, I'd have probably thought that must be for complete noobs that don't understand how a file system works. But these days, I don't know how I would even live without my documents and downloads folders. But anyway, let's drag a test.oet into here, like so, just to get that off my desktop. And yes, we were using Nautilus, an old version of it. I know the layout looks so much different today, especially with the modern Ubuntu themes. But anyway, yeah, we got a sound recorder. I don't know why modern Ubuntu versions don't come with that by default, though you can get Audacity, which is like that, only in a bigger package. And we do have Rhythmbox. Let's just skip this step. We don't need to do it right now. Very similar. We're using Rhythmbox 0.9.3.1. And we got an audio CD extractor. I assume a CD ripping program. And I think this is another CD ripping program. And then we've got recent documents over here. Not really too keen on it. Just a person preference. I know you may like it though. Now let's go search for test and then click find and then there we go. We got that and we can open that up. That's pretty nice having it like conveniently right here. And by the way, if you go back into the add remove tool, just give it a minute and it doesn't give us that notice anymore. Let's say we want to install a program and we just click apply, apply again. Then we're going to go enter our password and then it'll go ahead and install. And that actually went quick. Oh, it even shows us the new applications. It's in Office right here. Okay, kind of similar to OpenOffice word processor. Okay, then if you want to remove an application, we just uncheck that. Oh, wow, can't remove it? Seriously? That's actually kind of stupid. I don't know why I didn't just remove those dependencies along with it. But anyway, let's go to the Synaptic Package Manager. I guess this is where you need Synaptic. And then we just have to go search for Abby Word. Yeah, if I had to deal with that, that's one thing I would not have liked. Let's go mark that for a complete removal, mark it, and then that'll mark that removal along with its dependencies that we no longer need. And then if we click apply, it'll give us a summary for our changes. But anyway, we just click apply. And that was quick. I actually wonder if you can SSH through here. Oh, yes, you can, unsurprisingly. But anyway, actually, what I normally do first, but I ended up saving for last, is going through the preferences. Let's see what about me is. Okay. And actually, speaking of preferences, I want to see what desktop backgrounds there are. Yeah, not a lot of options here. It's a blue Ubuntu. Dawn of Ubuntu. You know what? I like this wallpaper. After all, that's a wallpaper I use on my Linux system right now. Let's see if we actually got power management, similar to what we have today, only in a much simpler interface. I wonder what preferred applications is. Default browser. I want to use Firefox. System. 
terminal. I'd rather use GNOME terminal. Again, very similar idea that we have integrated in the system settings only in a much simpler interface. Assistive technology support, similar to accessibility. We don't need assistive technologies for the purpose of this video. I wonder what screensaver options there were. Again, another thing that modern Ubuntu versions don't really have. Okay, a lot of these don't work. Let's actually keep it at blank screen or rather random. Okay, let's actually go into administration here since the rest of the preferences is pretty self-explanatory except for actually theme. Now let's see what themes we have. We got the legacy human theme. If you were one of those people that liked the dual brown with old versions of Ubuntu, there we go. Okay, that just looks very targeted at a niche group. I guess if you really love dark blue, okay. And there's also the gray theme, high contrast themes. Oh, there's even a low contrast theme if you really want that. And there's also smoky blue and then traditional. And then there's also the simple theme, which is pretty ugly. Like if you want no style whatsoever, let's actually stick with the human theme since the Ubuntu team back then did a good job of making it look good. Now we can go look at administration, starting off with users and groups. Again, simpler interfaces for everything. This is actually arguably more complicated. Printing, we can add a new printer. We can printer database, local printer. I don't know. This actually came a long way. Now it'll actually look for printers and show them to you, which is much easier for the average user to set up. Now let's go to disks, and then we've got properties and partitions. Again, everything in a much simpler interface. And then again, we had a swap partition back before we had a swap file. I actually do wonder what happened if I show hidden files. Let's see what's in my home folder. Why isn't it? Oh, I need to double click. Okay. I'm gonna put software properties. Okay, this is similar to software on updates, only again, a much simpler simpler interface. And you've got the time and date settings right here. Again, similar implementation that we have integrated into the system settings right now, only in a much simpler interface. You can see how everything had a much simpler interface back then. By the way, one last thing I want to show here, if we go into Update Manager, is that it will still show the upgrade for to Ubuntu 8.04.1 LTS, even though that hit its end of life back in 2011 on the desktop side and 2013 on the server side. Now, I know this won't work, but if we click Upgrade, it'll try to upgrade, but then it says getting the upgrade prerequisites failed. Now I've actually done a two-part video about upgrading Ubuntu 6.06 all the way to 20.04, which I'll link part one up in the card. But anyway, there is a workaround for this, which I went over in that video. Again, I encourage you to go check it out. But anyway, it'll just restore the original system state. And then the very, very last thing I want to show, this is a show desktop button. If you click on that, it'll minimize everything and just show your desktop if you want quick access to it. There you go. And these are virtual desktops, so you can have different applications open on different desktops. Say you want your word processor open on your second desktop and then your file browser open on your first desktop, you can do that. But I mean, fine in practice, I don't really use virtual desktops because I feel I just don't really need them. Just the way I like to do things. I know you may feel differently. I can already hear multitasking freaks screaming out in the comments section. But anyway, I feel that I've gone over everything there is to go over. So let's go shut this down and call it a day. And by the way, just in case this video convinced you to install Ubuntu 6.06 and use it as your daily driver, perhaps out of nostalgia, please don't. As I said at the beginning of this video, support for Ubuntu 6.06 ended all the way back in 2009, so that means it's no longer getting security updates, so it's not a secure thing to do. And if you do want to try this out yourself, do yourself a favor and use a virtual machine, because after all, legacy pieces of software are better off left in the past. But anyway, Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it interesting, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.